Hello and welcome. My name is Amanda and today I have for you a very special plan with me with my friend Darshell over at Books and Planners. And we actually met through the Creating and Co. Facebook book club group. So it's kind of cool that this week we are going to be planning using the same Ravenclaw. I think the kit was called um, Muggles to Wizards kit. And just answering some Harry Potter questions while we plan. So I plan in a B6 um, print pression planner and I use the Jesenia Printables Week on three pages plus notes page. And I believe Rochelle's probably planning in her Erin Condren today, so it's kind of cool that you'll be able to see the same kit used in two different planners. But rather than talking through my plan with me, as per usual, I'm going to be answering some questions that Darshell came up with us, or came up with for us. <laughs> and honestly, if I stumble through this, it's um, because I haven't talked through a plan with me in quite a while. I usually listen to my audiobooks while I lay down my stickers and then film a voiceover afterwards. So you'll have to bear with me if I stumble through some things. So the first question is, what Hogwarts house do you belong to? Um, I am a true to the core Ravenclaw. Um, I've always been a Ravenclaw. It's always the house that I've identified the most with. And every time I take a sorting quiz, whether it's the Pottermore quiz or like the extended quiz or the pick the Disney princesses and we'll tell you what Hogwarts house you are or whatever those other random quizzes are. I always get Ravenclaw. Um, it's for sure my favorite house. Even though they all have really good qualities to them, um, Ravenclaw's the best. <laughs> and I do love our color scheme of blue and bronze. Then the next question is, uh, who is your favorite character? And this was tricky for me because I like the adults in the story more so than the kids. So I think my favorite character is probably Molly Weasley because she kind of seems like just a housewife who probably doesn't do a lot like that's a lot of what she seems to be portrayed as um and like I feel like that's a lot how the wizarding world feels, feels around her but then she's just such a strong female character she's overly protective of her family and she doesn't let anybody get in the way so I think Molly is for sure one of my favorites the next question is, who is your favorite teacher? And this is why I struggled because my initial response to who my favorite character was, was Remus Lupin. But since he was a teacher, I didn't really feel like I could pick him. Um, but I also wouldn't say he's my favorite teacher. I think McGonagall is my favorite teacher because she is just incredible. Um, that's the box I was going to use. I think she does a lot for the kids. Um, I mean, there could be arguments that she kind of neglects them and doesn't listen to, uh, the things they tell her, like when Snape is doing his not so nice things. But I also feel like she really lets them learn and grow. Um, and kind of figure life out themselves versus just babying them and walking through the steps with them. Um, I mean, she probably could do a bit more to make them feel heard, but I think overall she, she just does a good job of balancing, um, letting them learn on their own and helping them through. Um, I'm not entirely sure what pattern I want to do for my glitter headers. You know what? I'll just leave them how they are. So I guess I kind of will go back and say that Lupin is a favorite character as well. 
he went through a lot of adversity um, by being turned into a werewolf, uh, not because he wanted to. I mean, I don't know that anyone really wants to be turned into a werewolf, but even through that, he's still so incredibly intelligent and he's so compassionate um, he's by far the best of the Marauders, and I think he could have done so much better than having that friend group that he had, but to each to their own. Um, and I just think that after not getting let down, but by kind of being pushed down so much in a way and out of society, he still stays so humble and doesn't turn his back on things like I feel like a lot of people potentially could. Um, so I really do like Lupin. Okay, and then um, the next question, question number four, is what's your um, favorite candy in the wizarding world? This one's a little tricky for me because I've only actually ever tried, um, I made my own chocolate frogs once. I bought the mold specifically for a Harry Potter party to make chocolate frogs. Um, I've tried making butterbeer, which was not good. I don't know if it was the recipe I used or it just was too sweet. Um, I'd like to try butterbeer like in the actual Universal. Um, I've tried Birdie Bot's Every Flavored Beans and I don't trust them. <laughs> so I can't say those are a favorite. And then other than that, I've tried Jelly Slugs. So I think Jelly Slugs would probably be my favorite of the candies I've tried. But I don't know, I just really wanna go to Honey Dukes and get a bag and fill it up and figure out what my actual favorite is. Um, I feel like I'd probably like those exploding bonbons. I probably really like licorice ones. Um, ooh, I would probably really like cauldron cakes too. So I could have a lot of favorites, but <laughs> of the ones I've tried, it's definitely the jelly slugs. I'll go back quickly. Um, I'm going to put uh, what color did we land on? <laughs> okay. So I think I was going to turn use the books turn muggles into wizards quote. That might be a little crooked. No, not too bad. So the next question is, what is your Patronus or your ideal Patronus? And I do happen to know what my Patronus is, um, thanks to Pottermore. My Patronus is a black swan, which I was, I mean, to be honest, I was a little uh, disappointed about at first because I wanted something really cool. But I think black swans are one of the more rare Patronuses that you can get. And um, I don't know, just seems pretty cool now that I think about it a bit more. So I have a black swan as my Patronus. I think it was because <laughs> I watched um, Eddie Redmayne take the sorting quiz or and I think um, Andrew Lincoln, and they both got a type of dog. I think Eddie Redmayne's was a beagle, and Andrew Lincoln's is a um, like a bloodhound or something like that. And I was like, I really want a dog as my Patronus because I love dogs, but nope, I got a, a black swan, which is pretty dang cool too. 
All right, so I'm kind of realizing I forgot a couple stickers, so it'll be good timing to um, let my camera cool down for just a moment while I grab what I need after I lay down these habit trackers, and then we can continue on with the questions. I really want to know, I guess a Patronus could be any animal, but I really want like an official list. I wonder if there's a way to get that. Um, that one fit? Yeah. All right. So I got what I need. It should be good now for the rest of this video, but we'll see. <laughs> so the next question is question number five, and it is, um, nope, we're on question number six. <laughs> it's what is your favorite subject at Hogwarts? I always thought that my favorite subject would be charms. And it's like super necessary because if you don't have charms, then how can you really cast any of the other spells that you need in your other classes? So I always thought that kind of like English and math, that charms would be one of those fundamental subjects at Hogwarts. And I feel like that would be one of my favorites. Um, but also I think I would really like Transfiguration. I'm not entirely sure why, but I think McGonagall would be one of my favorite teachers because she's one of those no-nonsense type of people. And I always hated like the class clowns in school who would just be annoying and disruptive and think it was the funniest thing in the world <laughs> and disrupt other people's learning. So I really think I would like Transfiguration with McGonagall. And also Charms with Flitwick because he's kind of like the opposite of McGonagall, at least like how he's portrayed in the movies. He's just kind of unaware and students like Seamus can blow off their eyebrows and he doesn't even notice until like after it's happened. <laughs> so I, I think those two would be my favorite. Mm, yeah. Oops. I cut these. It looks like I didn't cut them all the way through. Um, so there would be four stars versus all six. All right. And the next question is, what's your ideal wizarding career? Um, this is a two-part question, so I'm going to start with that. So, again, this is kind of where I need, like, a full comprehensive list of what all is out there. Um, but some of my favorites, I've got three favorites. So, I really like the idea of wand making. Because I feel like there's got to be so much advanced learning involved in that and also a lot of room for like creativity with design and the like. Um, I also really like the idea of Magizoologist because my dream job when I was a child was to be an elephant trainer at the zoo. Um, so and I really love the Fantastic Beasts movies because uh, we get to learn a lot more about what kind of magical creatures are out there, and I'm such an animal lover. And I think they're hilarious, and they're so cool looking. My favorite, which I said in my last plan with me, my favorite Fantastic Beast is the Thunderbird, which is also my Ilvermorny house. This one needs to be pushed up. Uh, 
And then I also, though don't really know how practical <laughs> this carrier is. I'm sorry, my um, raven claws coming out. Um, I really like the idea of being a herbologist, though a lot of the plants in the wizarding world seem like they could be pretty dangerous. <laughs> um, one of my, I don't know, I just really like the feel of the greenhouse. Um, I like Professor Sprout a lot. That's not the color I wanted. So I think being a herbologist would be really cool as well. And I do love being in my just normal muggle garden. So I think I would really like to work in a greenhouse and know all about the different kinds of plants there are. Two more flags to lay down. Nope, three more flags to lay down. And then we can move on to the next question. And I'm not gonna do it on camera, but I do have these um, silver glitter headers from Rose Colored Days. They're from, it's a part of a washi roll that has um, perforated strips that are the size of headers so I am going to pull that in it's kind of got um, confetti and stars and the like in it which I think is really pretty and it'll be a nice accent for this kit though to be honest I am a book snob when it comes to Ravenclaw colors um, I hate that most merch is movie colors and so I almost always refuse to purchase things if they're not the proper Ravenclaw colors <laughs> um, so pairing this with silver foil does hurt me just a little bit but one of the traits or like one of the you know like big um, uh, classes associated with Ravenclaw is astronomy so I guess I can kind of get over it for that reason it'll be like twinkling stars I'm gonna not color block as you can tell I've been really enjoying not color blocking um, it stresses me out a lot less not that I'm actually like legitimately stressed out while I plan but I do like the way it looks all right, so, oh, and then the next portion of that question was, um, what career are you sitting for your NEWTs for the Magical Readathon? Um, for those of you that might not be aware, if you're not used to um, books and planners being melded together in one channel, is that um, there's this lovely lady named G over at Book Roast who last year created uh, readathons around the exams that students sit at Hogwarts. So we sit the OWLs in April and then the NEWTs in August. And then she usually does like an extra credit or um, she also did Hogwarts or Christmas at Hogwarts, which was kind of like a um, Kind of like a, a path map quiz sort of thing like you could read one subject and then it would split and then you would be able to choose between the next two and then those would split and the like um so for this year's newts i am pursuing a career as a magic zoologist um this was greatly inspired by last year watching the crimes of grindelwald in november and then i just decided basically i knew when the newts came around again that i was gonna sit for magic zoologist um, because like i said i am an animal lover and last year i sat my newts for a wand maker but we didn't have like a comprehensive breakdown 
of what courses each career needed um, to pass or what levels of the NEWTs each needed to pass. So um, I kind of figured it out a little bit on my own and decided what I thought was necessary. Um, but this year G made a fantastic diagram, um, or not diagram, but a um, wizarding career booklet so that you could kind of have a little bit more structured um, way to plan out your NEWTs and figure out what levels were needed for each career, which I think is really, really cool. I'm going to flip back and see how I labeled. Okay, over the top. And as this goes up, um, the readathon lasts for the whole month. So we'll have another two weeks, um, this week and the next week. And I need to read seven books in that time. And I've currently read seven books total, but only four, I think, that count towards my um, NEWTs. So I need to make some more progress. Let's do this one. All right, the next question is, would you enter the Triwizard Tournament? And my answer is a big heck no, I would not in a million years. <laughs> Um, no, <laughs> that would be so terrifying. I am a really, really, really good cheerleader. Um, so I would support my fellow housemate, or I guess it would be schoolmate, um, since there's one champion per school. And I would help them study, and I would wear a big obnoxious hat like Luna um, to show my support. But no, I would have no desire myself to actually enter the Triwizard Tournament. Um, yeah, no, it's just not for me. But I think it would be really cool if, or to see, like if I were at Hogwarts the year that it would take place, I would love that. Hopefully that's straight for the most part. All right. Um, so next is question number nine, and this is what pet would you take to Hogwarts with you? Um, so I'm going to answer first as if there isn't a list of only three pets you can take with you. I would take my dog Ronan, um, because he's the best dog in the whole entire world, um, and he's my bud, and I couldn't imagine going to Hogwarts without him. But if I were only allowed to take either a cat, toad, or owl, I usually always lean towards owl, but I think the more I think about it, um, I realize, like, yeah, it would be cool to have my own owl, but at the same time, um... You can borrow the school's owls. So if I could have like an actual companion with me that doesn't have to stay in the owlery, that would be not too bad. Um, I'm debating whether I want to leave enough room to put down like a reading sticker or not. Or just take up the awkward space. I'll probably use undo and move this down a little bit. Um... Which again kind of puts me in a bind because I don't know what the benefit of having a toad would be. And I'm not a cat person. Which is why I want to take my dog. <laughs> but I guess I would make myself be a cat person. 
just to have a companion. But it would have to be like a really cool cat that wouldn't claw my eyes out. And one that would like actually hang out with me. So maybe one like Crookshanks that looks super grumpy and kind of does what it wants a little bit of the time, but also kind of wants to be near you. But I don't know. I would take my parents' cat, to be honest. He's the coolest cat in the whole world. And the last question is um, another two-parter. So the first part is, what is your favorite Harry Potter book? Um, hands down, Goblet of Fire. I think it is the book where the story completely shifts from being middle grade to being young adult. Um, it's fun because you have the Triwizard Tournament and you get to see so much more of the wizarding world. Like you kind of, you get to see bits and pieces of it in the first three books with um, Diagon Alley and Leaky Cauldron and um, Nocturne Alley and Hogsmeade. But it's so fascinating the way it's described um, in the books with the, um, I didn't, oh, that's why I didn't, with the way that the wizarding world interacts together um, when they get all together. Also, um, that it's supposed to be in like this big vacant secret field hidden away from muggles and they kind of like don't know how to interact with muggle things and um, um, I might use a sticker that Darshell gave me actually instead of pulling in Actually, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? Um, so it's fun because of that, that you get to see way more of the wizarding world. But also, you have the Quidditch World Cup, um, which we learn so much about uh, the world there. You also get the Triwizard Tournament and all of the different... Um, events that the kids have to go through, which is really fascinating. And like I said, like I would love to be a spectator. I would not love to actually join in. Um, and then, well, a big part is that Cedric was my very first like fictional crush and that just absolutely killed me. Um, but I just think it's it's intriguing because the story grows exponentially from there. So definitely uh, Goblet of Fire. If I had to put the books in order, I would say Goblet of Fire, Half-Blood Prince, um, Deathly Hallows, probably Order of the Phoenix, then Prisoner of Azkaban, then Sorcerer's Stone, and then Chamber of Secrets. Um, but definitely Goblet of Fire and uh, Half-Blood Prince being my top two. And then the second part is, what's your favorite movie? And honestly, I'm probably going to say... Uh, <laughs> this one's tricky for me. Um, I think... My favorite is probably, even though I was disappointed by it, um, because they cut out so much of what I loved about the book, but um, Goblet of Fire as well. I just thought it was so cool to see that stuff come to life, even though I had different expectations and I had um, pictured things quite differently. Um, and then we lost a lot of 
the magic in the world around that, um, it's still a really good movie, I think. I remember being the most upset with Prisoner of Azkaban because they shift the, um, the Hogwarts grounds. So it makes it more like, I think, what it's supposed to look like in the books. But, like, going from the first two books or movies and having a flat lawn to get to Hagrid's hut and then um, having a sloping lawn, <laughs> I hated that so much. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, I think I will turn off the camera, let it cool really quickly, and write in all my plans, and then I'll show you a quick flip through. So I'll be right back. Woohoo, look at all that foil. <laughs> so I did fill out the stickers and the paper. I haven't filled out the paper yet, but with this Pilot G2 gel pen in silver, it kind of blends in a little so you can't see it super well. But there is what I have so far. I will use the rest of the stickers um, in my next plan with me because a lot of them did match um, artwork that Paige had used last year for her house kits. So I bought the extras uh, full boxes so that I could pull those in and make a complete spread again. But I really had a lot of fun uh, answering these questions and I can't wait to see what Darshell's responses were. And also, if you would like to answer these questions, I will have all 10 listed down in the description box below. Um, if you do decide to answer these on your own plan with me or just a book video, please let me know and link me to your video. And you can also just answer these in the comments if you don't have your own um, YouTube platform. But I am really curious to hear everyone else's responses to these. I thought they were pretty unique questions and not ones that I hear a lot of people answering. So I hope you enjoyed this plan with me and I will chat with you down in the comments until my next video. Bye.